All right, guys, today we're going to be reacting to KSK German Special Forces in Afghanistan. I didn't even know these people went to Afghanistan. Interesting. We're going to see a little bit of action, I guess, and see how these people handle confrontation on the outside. Let's jump in. Let's see what's going on. Okay, let's see. In December 2001, two months after the commencement of operations in Afghanistan, the German military deployed a contingent of 100 operators from the Commando Special Kulafte, or more commonly known as the KSK, the Special Forces Unit of the German Army. I already know this video is going to be awesome. <laughs> Only because of the music, man, and the, the map and everything. Oh, man, we're going to have a blast. On its arrival in the country in January of 2002, the detachment came under the command of the US Third wow. Task Force KBAR, a multinational special forces task force that was operating in southern Afghanistan. After serving with KBAR for a few months, the KSK then switched its focus in mid-2002 to supporting German and coalition forces in the Afghan capital city of Kabul. Mm. Before, unfortunately, it becomes slightly harder to follow the taskings of the unit, as sources conflict with each other on whether it was completely withdrawn from Afghanistan at the end of 2002, or if the KSK maintained a small presence in the country throughout 2003 wow. and 2004. What is known, however, is that from mid-2005 to 2014, the latter date marking the end of NATO combat operations in the theatre, the KSK not only increased its presence in the country, but also began to ramp up its operations against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, particularly in the north where the bulk of the German forces were deployed. One of its first missions during this period took place sometime in late 2005 and these are special forces, I understand. Now, do the special forces have the same regulations of the regular military? Meaning, can a German give orders for these special forces to just go to another country to do what they have to do? Let me know in the comment section below. And saw the KSK working alongside the US 3rd Special Forces Group to take down or clear an undisclosed target during which one of the German operators was wounded as a result of an IED explosion. Wow. Other missions included a raid against an Al-Qaeda bomb-making house in Kabul in October of 2006, and a heli-borne assault against a Taliban meeting in Bagalan province on the 12th of October 2012 that was codenamed Operation Moonlight and led to the capture of 17 senior Taliban officials, wow. among them the orchestrator of an IED attack against German troops on the 2nd of June 2011. However, none of these operations carried out in the late 2000s and early 2010s would impact or shape the KSK as much as the one conducted on the 4th of May 2013. Mm. That's the one we're going to On that spring day, a detachment of Afghan policemen were conducting a routine security patrol near the village of Zaman Kil in the north of Baglan province, when they were ambushed by a numerically superior Taliban force that was entrenched in a nearby wooded area. Pinned down by the enemy fire, the Afghans radioed for reinforcements with a 17-man team from the KSK being mobilized from forward operating base Kila Gai. Arriving in the vicinity of the ambush location, the 17-man team moved forward and linked up with their Afghan counterparts, who, instead of assisting the German operators and neutralizing the enemy threat, began to disengage from the contact and flee from the area, mm. with reports stating that the policemen established a new position approximately a kilometer away from where they watched the battle unfold. This incident sparked anger throughout the German military, with senior German defense officials in the aftermath questioning the future of the relationship between the German and Afghan forces. Wow. Whilst one member of the KSK stated that they, the Afghan policemen, were cowardly and let us down. Wow. Wow. Well, it's just to show you, a lot of people give a lot of, you know... <sighs> Sometimes we don't talk about this side of the equation when you know, during the Afghan war. And if I was the United States, I would just let that country just go to hell, man. Because to be honest, folks, I'm going to be honest. This is what happened. This is what happened. Here you are. People or countries using their own resources to defend you. And here you are just letting those people that want to help you down. Crazy, huh? Nonetheless, the men of the KSK didn't have time to assess what was happening and were forced to seek whatever cover they could find as the Taliban insurgents switched their focus to the German troops. Yeah. 
Despite returning fire, it quickly became clear to the German operators that they were not only outnumbered, but also outgunned, as the enemy fighters brought into action heavy calibre machine guns yep. and rocket launchers. That's crazy. Realising this, the operators called for immediate air support, which initially came in the form of two German UH Tiger helicopters, which launched their onboard rockets into the forest, before being replaced by a similar number of US wow, attack look helicopters. At that. Wow. Like wow, look at that again. Efficiency. Efficiency. To two US A-10 Thunderbolt aircraft, wow. which bombed and strafed the enemy strong point. Wow. The weight of this aerial bombardment was effective in silencing the enemy gunfire, providing the 17-man KSK team a short period of respite to gather their bearings and take hold of the situation. Eventually, with the fighting having died down, the decision was made to send a four-man patrol forward to the forest to gather intelligence from the contact and to be certain that the enemy was neutralized. Wow. However, as the small team reached the edge of the wooded area, a Taliban fighter who was hunkered down in his foxhole opened fire with his AK-47, hitting Hotfeld Weeble Daniel Wirt before training his rifle into one of the other operators who was struck by a bullet to his helmet and knocked off his feet. Mm. Luckily, the bullet failed to pierce the ballistic material of the helmet and the second soldier was fortunate to walk away from the incident with only minor wounds to his head. Okay. Meanwhile, the two other operators of the patrol engaged and killed the Taliban fighter prior to rushing to the assistance of their wounded colleagues and pulling them back to the safety of the rest of the KSK team, who were laying down cover and fire as a dozen more Taliban insurgents emerged from their dugouts and engaged the German troops. Wow. Subsequently, so this is, I personally think this is what the German military needs. There needs a lot of this. I'm not saying just go there, just go out and start, start stuff, right? Personally think that experience alone helps your military. You don't want to be in a military that never goes to war or never go to special forces or never go to special missions. You don't a very virgin military. You don't want that. You want a couple of people with some kind of experience, right? Some sectors of your military with some experience and that way you can pass it on. Over the course of the next hour, the German special forces, despite becoming dangerously low on ammunition, they know, yeah. fought off a numerically superior Taliban force causing an unknown number of enemy casualties until a couple of US Army helicopters arrived to evacuate them from the region. Damn. On seeing the American aircraft, the German troops, several of whom were carrying the two wounded operators, began to disengage from the far fight and make their way to the landing zone, where they boarded the helicopters, all the while under constant enemy observation, and were extracted back to Fort Operating Base Kiel Agai. Wow. Upon touching down at the base, the wounded were rushed to a nearby aid post where, sadly, despite the best efforts by the medics to save his life, Hotfeld Weeble Daniel Wirtz was pronounced as killed in action in the evening of the 4th of May, 2013. Wow. Wow, that's, that's sad, man. That's very sad. That's very sad. It says here, the passing of Hopfeld being Daniel Will with Worth marked the first time that a member of the Commando Special Force has fallen in combat in the unit's history. Wow, because he was the first one. Wow. He was the first one. Wow. He was the first one. There's something else here. It says an investigation into the 4th May incident is speculated that the Afghan policemen had connection with the Taliban, although this has never been confirmed. Well, if they think, if they, if the Afghan, this is the thing, man, you, when you go to places like this, you don't know who you want to trust. I mean, you're looking for leads and just keys to know where your enemy is, but you don't know who's your friend or not, you know. A memory of how how full do it, Daniel Worth? Yeah, poor guy, man. Damn. Whether here or in Afghanistan, we are we are with Daniel and his relative on this day. We will never forget him, Captain Andy KSK. Psst. Sad. That's sad. Damn. That's actually sad, though. 
I would love to know how active the KSK is with outside conflict, you know. I would love to know that. And how often they go to missions. Because clearly, uh, losing, well, I'm not saying that losing one life is bad, but how often these people go to these kind of missions? Because, I mean, with what is going on in the Eastern European area, you know, that region is kind of dangerous right now. So somehow we have to toughen up. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I would love to hear you guys' opinion. I'll see you in the next one.